example pick, you might be wondering what sign term metric means. Uh, well, I will go back to this point very quickly because sign term metric or sometimes bibliometric analysis refers to a specific type of research synthesis, which was qualitative, uh, I mean, quantitatively designed. Well, so that's just to bear this term in mind, and we firstly introduce the outline of this presentation, and then we will uh, go back to this point. Okay, so this presentation will be separated into three main parts, research methods, result and discussion, and conclusion. Well, from this outline, you can see that I will firstly introduce the data collection method, and then data analysis method, which is, of course, scientometric analysis. And then in results and discussion parts, publication analysis, first analysis, and cluster analysis will help us understand the trend in language teaching, of course, um, which is the focus of our um, um, presentation today. So let's just move on to the method section. Um, okay, so before we talk about sign term metric analysis, let's look at what and how the data of this project was collected. Um, for database, I decided to use SSCI, which is, of course, Social Science Citation Index. I, I Maybe all of you know that. And SSCI represents the most influential group of journals around the world. I suppose the adoption of this database could better signify the real trend of the discipline. And the time span, okay, the time span was said to be 2001 to 2020. And the topic, which is also the search word, is the language teaching, of course. Well, it means that this project will like to evaluate the status quo of language teaching in the very recent 20 years, based on which we could attempt to locate the trend in our field. And uh, the research views, well, that is part of the filter in Web of Science, which is the website of SACI. And the research fields was said to be linguistics and education, uh, which are the most pertinent domains to language teaching, of course. Well, finally, we retrieved 1,495 uh, 4, research articles written in English. Then, based on this big data pool, let's talk about how those data was analyzed. So the first term, of course, uh, will be bibliometrics or scientometrics. Well, from the name, you may have a preliminary glance on what these two terms are. So it's basically to generate a matrix for science or matrix or for bibliography. Well, technically speaking, it's the analysis of scientific publications in a quantitative manner. Well, of course, for over 1,000 articles, I cannot just read through them and summarize them. So I have to use a quantitative methods. Well, before you are given more illustrations on this quantitative way of research synthesis, let's quickly talk about its advantages and disadvantages. Um, well, it's useful and usable, particularly because of um, its big data nature. So you might know that when we are doing literature review or research analysis and uh, that we are doing all uh, that we're always doing, we use this kind of academic instinct developed in many years of study in this particular discipline. So uh, basically I study a lot and then I read a lot. I know who uh, the most influ uh, which uh, the most influential uh, author is, um, which article, is most influential in our field, something like that. But using scientific metric analysis, we could indeed review hundreds or even thousands of articles with the help of computers. Well, the main advantage derived by this big data nature is that we could be more objective and we could cover a very comprehensive picture of the discipline we are interested in. Um, also, what I would like to say for maybe junior researchers like MS mean, students or PhD students, and also your supervisees, of course, is that we could actually use ontometric analysis to evaluate the topic-specific situation. I mean, domain-specific or topic-specific situation of the academia by yourself. So by scientometric analysis, you could evaluate which article is the most influential one which author is the most influential one and which journal is the most influential one in your specific topic. Well, so if your supervisees do not know where to start, use scientometric analysis to have a try. And also if what you are interested in is not 
those so-called mainstream direction, which means you are struggling in how to identify the most influential paper, author, or journal, of course, try to use scientometric analysis to identify them. And if you like to integrate this quantitative method into your paper, try to have a mixed, me a mixed method literature review as well. Try to find your own direction and research topic with this method. Well, nevertheless, I have to point out that one main disadvantage of this method is that and just like other quantitative methods, scientometric analysis is significantly dependent on the data retrieved from your chosen database. So if you are searching something very general, for example, communication, then you may retrieve some data that just recognizes the term communication as a general word, but not the specific jargon you're looking for. Okay, so much for the research method part. Let's uh, move on to the research result of this project. Um, so the basic and most straightforward function of scientometric analysis is publication analysis, including author productivity, country productivity, journal productivity, and also author collaboration, country collaboration, and journal collaboration, etc. So based on this figure that are generated to represent the country collaboration, we can see that there are big yellow bubbles, um, each of which entails one country. Oh, the size of the bubble indicates the number of articles published by the author with the institution in these countries. So maybe if you publish the paper and your institution is, um, belongs to Japan, uh, one index will uh, contribute to the yellow bubble in Japan. So uh, by the way, it has to be noticed that we should evaluate this figure with reference to the population or the size of academia of that certain country. For instance, although China published similar number of articles with Spain, as Spain's population or size of academia is relatively small, China's productivity is actually low lower than Spain, right? Um, and uh, the lines, you can see that there are yellow um, short lines stretched in this figure. Uh, well, the lines actually represent the collaboration between countries. Also, you can see that there are some purple lace or purple border of these bubbles. This signify the centrality, well, which could be understood to be whether this specific country is collaborative with the other country. Well, because if you are collaborating, you will have more lines, right? You will have more lines connected to other countries and therefore you will be more central in the sense of statistics. So um, for maybe Japan, for instance, the degree of collaboration is a bit low um, because mm, there's no purple lace here, but I'm not in a position to judge whether it's good or bad. So for this project, you could have your own implications based on this finding. And I would like to emphasize that this is just a descriptive um, thing to um, give us uh, illustration of how the academia looks like, but not um, to give your interpretive, uh, interpretive conclusion about what is good or what is bad. So for the analysis later, please be aware of that, and I will talk about it later as well. Um, so let's move on from the analysis of the productivity of the or the collaboration towards the analysis of the most influential author in our field. So using scientometric analysis, you could generate a figure and uh, a table which demonstrate the author cited in this field. Therefore, if you would like to locate who the most cited author is in the field of language teaching, you could look at this. So Ellis, um, Grimsch, Donay, David Newton, Wayne, and this list could go on. Well, from this, you can see that we easily locate who the most cited author is. And uh, if we arbitrarily, or well, relatively arbitrarily, categorize um, the most cited author to be the most influential author, then we have this most influential author list. Well, mm, again, that's uh, for language teaching or other big disciplines, well, um, metaphorically big disciplines. Maybe it is not that useful because you read through it and you know who is most, uh, who the most influential author is already. But for some specific topic, for example, if you are doing, um, 
online education, you like to know who is investigating Zoom, or like we are joking about Zoom University, something like that. So you could just search the term Zoom in the relevant field like linguistics and education. And then you will retrieve a very specific pool of data representing the investigation on Zoom in the field of linguistics and education. And then you could actually retrieve the data and you could generate a table about who the most influential and most cited author is in this particular topic. So, um, you, maybe you could try it later. And uh, this is um, the most important thing um, in this project, that is best analysis and also later on um, cluster analysis. So we use it to address our research question that is the research trend in language teaching. So you you could find uh, you could find that uh, there are top sixteen keywords with the strongest citation best. Um, from this table, you could see that there's uh, some red um, code, some blue one, something like that. And the red one actually indicates the strongest citation best. The best begins with a year, and you could you will find that this line contains um, twenty or twenty one. Uh, blocks and every uh, each one represents one year. So basically, we could use this mm, figure to generate or to interpret what trend uh, of of uh, I mean what uh, what we are doing in those twenty years. So basically, I um, concluded four main trends. The first one is teacher to learner. You can see that we are reorientated from language teaching to teacher training to learner instruction and to learner. Well, to learner, I mean, maybe individual differences variables, uh, which I will talk about later. And uh, uh, based on this point, I would like to remind you again that it is not to say that teacher-based research as outdated or learner-based research is better than teacher-oriented research. It's just about, well, maybe learner-oriented research um, attracts more attention and though, uh, and there's just more, more uh, how to say, more researchers still investigating this topic. Uh, it's not to say that learner as uh, learner oriented research is better than teacher oriented research. Okay, so the second trend I identify is uh, teaching to testing. So from instruction to conversation analysis, well, I, I'm not saying that conversation analysis is, is one kind of teaching uh, or one kind of testing, but conversation analysis actually transfer from how you instruct the, um, how you instruct, how you, provide the instruction to uh, this kind of content analysis and conversation analysis uh, within the particular group of students. And then um, this focus oriented to proficiency. Um, and the third trend is focus, they focus on higher level factors. Well, by higher, higher level is also a little bit metaphorical. I, I know whether you could actually um, quite understand that because I uh, pick up this term in multi-model multi level, uh, multi-level modeling. That means higher level is like social level, um, like economic, political, this level, but not language learner, but not cognitive, not behavioral, this level. Um, uh, so it's like we, change our focus from language teaching to language ideology or something like that. I, I will pick up this later. And the fourth one is the focus on international settings or multilingual context. So we just, uh, we basically transfer our attention from language learning or foreign language teaching to intercultural competence because of the um, emergence of this multi uh, multilingual uh, context. So um, based on this business analysis, we generate four main trends and uh, 
from this cluster analysis, we could have some other insights. Well, you can see that they there are 10, uh, 10 cluster generated by those 1,400 um, articles, uh, zero to nine, like multilingualism, computer assisted language learning, language teaching, language teacher cognition, something like that. And uh, there are five most important um, research focus that were, uh, that were um, identified to be important in those data. So the first one is multilingualism. Um, and uh, the second one is technology. Um, technology, I mean computer assisted language learning, and also they research in computer mediated communication. Okay. And uh, the third one is ESP, English for specific purpose. The fourth one, individual differences for variables like motivation. And fifth, insight from theoretical linguistics like systemic functional grammar. Um, well, especially for the fourth one, I would like to say it's a little bit different because for the first, second, third, and fifth, they are all um, maybe fields or disciplines or sub disciplines like multilingualism, okay, it's a field. Technology like computer assisted language learning, okay, it's a field or subfield of applied linguistics. But for individual differences variables, they are variables or constructs. So when you are, uh, or you, if you would like to participate in the research in this line of research, I would recommend you to think about one particular um, issue is that whether the research in individual differences variables could empower multilinguals or could empower language learners, or actually we are doing quite the opposite because um, give you a quick example like personality traits. For example, if your main research interest is about extroversion, you find that extrovert students are good language learners because they are more, they, they perceive more uh, willingness to communicate and they practice English or practice other languages um, more than the introvert students. So they grow faster than those introvert students. You have to be very cautious about their statement because um, firstly you have to think about whether introvert students could indeed um, be more competent in other aspects of language learning for example they may be uh, they may be more sensitive to some syntactic roles well I don't know or maybe they will have higher proficiency or higher or higher uh, learning efficiency in computer assisted language learning because they don't have to talk to the other people. They could just talk to the computer or talk to the applications, you know, mobile phone, something like that. So we don't know. Uh, when we are making the claims like extrovert students are good language learners, we are implicitly discriminate or implicitly um, degrading the other kind of so-called bad language learners. So that's pretty much what I would like to emphasize on this line of research. Well, the fifth one is the insight from theoretical linguistics. I particularly uh, pick up systemic functional linguistics here. But what I would like to say is that sometimes we have this kind of separationism. We separate applied linguistics uh, from linguist, uh, from theoretical linguistics, we separate a lot. We would like to identify ourselves as the researcher in a particular field. But what I would like to appeal is that we should actually learn from other so-called fields, although uh, the fields using here is a little bit strange. Um, we should um, integrate some elements in theoretical linguistics such as SFG to uh, apply linguistics and also um, if we step further we should think about to integrate the um, elements and the thoughts of uh, other disciplines into applied linguistics and la language teaching. So maybe individual differences variables is a good point because individual differences variables is widely investigated in psychology or in 
or uh, maybe differential psychology, something like that. Um, so maybe we should think about to integrate more from the other disciplines to our own research to those interdisciplinary opportunities. Um, okay, and then not only to generate a cluster analysis per se from 2001 to 2020, I actually separate them into four main um, period. The first one is 2001, 2005. You could uh, quickly look at it. I have a summary table afterward. Um, acquisition, language, literacy and language, good success, college, complement responses. Okay, 2006 to 2010, um, education, language teaching, foreign language teaching, communicative language teaching, second language learning, conversation analysis, college, content-based language learning, teacher training, and uh, of course, CEFR. And uh, 2011 to 2015, second language acquisition, learner attitudes, course design, input-based tasks, uh, computer media communication, conversation analysis, collaborative learning, history of education. And the final one, task repetition, teacher uh, learning, computer mediated communication, communicative language teaching, language policy and planning, nationalism, SFL. And uh, you can see that I um, concluded in this table and uh, we could actually use this table to try to find some um, involvement in our field. For example, the first one I thought is that we change a little bit from literacy-based language teaching to communicative-based language teaching. So literacy and language to communicative language teaching. Well, again, I have to point out that it is not to say that communicative-oriented research is better than literacy-oriented research. It is just a trend of in our field, okay? And uh, the second one, content-based language learning towards input-based, towards collaborative uh, learning, towards talks reputation. And uh, also the emergence of computer-mediated communication and of course computer-assisted language learning and language teaching. Um, and the final one is those cute um, terms like language policy and planning and nationalism and SFL. Uh, for language policy and planning, it quite echoes what I have argued that there are high, fac high factors or high level factors in, uh, engaging, uh, engaged by our researchers like uh, language policy and planning. And for nationalism, there's quite like an uh, attitude no variable that linked between individual differences variables and higher level variables and SFL, of course, um, interdisciplinary opportunities. So that pr that's pretty much about what I would like to say today. And uh, to conclude, firstly, I introduced a bibliometric analysis or scientometric analysis method that is a quantitative approach to research synthesis. If you are junior researchers or if you have some um, PhD students or you have some supervisors who are struggling about how to um, locate the most influential one, how to locate the most influential journal, something like that, try to let them study and use scientific analysis method. And uh, they, uh, there are five major research trends in language teaching that I spotted in this project. The first one is that we slightly tra transfer our attention from teacher to learner, that is individual differences variables. And uh, by individual differences variables, I briefly talk about what we should be concerned about when we are conducting this line of research. And the second one is, we, uh, is the classroom education to computer assisted language learning. And uh, I suppose with the influence of COVID-19, this line of research will arrive in maybe next one or two years. And uh, thirdly, they, there's a general trend from general English teaching to ESP teaching, English for specific purposes. And fourth, multilingualism and also intercultural communication. So basically it's like we are living in a world in which 
multilingualism is the norm of the society. So multilingualism gradually became the center of uh, our focus. And the fifth one is about theoretical linguistics. But uh, I would not say that theoretical linguistics is where we should stop, but we should step further, not only to integrate theoretical linguistics into applied linguistic research, but also to find more interdisciplinary studies or interdisciplinary opportunities. Well, that's pretty much um, the end. So let's move on to the next section, maybe a Q&A section. Okay, so it's five minutes left. So maybe we'd like to have some questions. Thank you, everyone. If you would like to ask a question to the presenter, please unmute your mic. Sure, I have a quick question. Was this based on um, the keywords that were listed in the keyword section, or was it based mostly on the actual text inside the full text, the full um, essays, articles, or were these based on what was inside the abstract? Well, for the cluster analysis, there are three main parts or three main methods. You could actually choose yourself the title, the abstract, and the keyword. So you retrieve the data from the SSI database, and then there are three main sections you could use, the title, the abstract, and the keyword. So you could just uh, choose one that you like to investigate the most yourself. And for this specific project, I use keyword. Did you find any difficulty with articles where the abstract and keywords were in one language, but the actual content of their article was in a different language, which is common for a lot of Spanish articles? Well, actually, when I'm when I'm uh, introducing the data collection method, some I just very briefly talk about it because one of the filter there is that the articles should be published in English because um, for for SSCI, um, most of the research articles was published in English, and uh, for the convenience of this method to be wrong, and I just filter, uh, I just filter out the articles published in other languages. Sorry for that. Sure, thank you. Thank you for your question. We have about three more minutes if there are any other questions for the speaker. Well, it looks like that might be everything. Can everybody unmute your mics and give the speaker a round of applause? 